Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be talking about, about heel and toe. Now heel and toe is something that you see a lot of advanced drivers doing and it's something that you definitely, if you're racing with a car with a H pattern shifter, you should definitely get into. And to be honest, even with, even with paddles, if your car doesn't automatically blip on your downshifts, you should be doing it anyway, just to make sure gears go in nice and easily. Now I'm going to be going through the why, when, and how of heel and toe. But before we do that, just if you guys are enjoying the videos, if you like the videos that I'm making, don't forget to hit the like button down below. And of course, hit the subscribe button as well and the little bell notification so you guys know when I release another video. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take the GT86 out on track. It's obviously a H pattern car and uh, just do, do a lap without um, heel and towing. And then of course, do a lap with heel and towing, the, trying to do it without heel and towing is going to be really difficult actually for me because I'm so used to doing it. But hopefully that then shows you what the benefits are of heel and toe and it kind of makes more sense to you why you should be doing it. So here we are heading out on the uh, onto the start finish line at the Silverstone National Circuit. Now of course uh, I'm going to do a lap trying not to heel and toe as much as possible. It's kind of ingrained in my muscle memory now so uh, this might be a little bit difficult but already you can see the car getting very sideways as I head into the first corner and that's kind of what I'm trying to avoid is as I'm kind of slamming down the gears and trying to get slowed down as quickly as possible um, just stopping the rear wheels from locking up because uh, the obviously uh, the synchros in the gearbox have to slow the engine speed down to uh, there we go we've got a little bit of uh, the car complaining having to slow the engine speed down to the uh, speed of the wheels so we head out onto the back straight and I'll try and get into this corner as much as I can just lay on the brakes and again I'm not blipping the throttle there to try and get it into a gear so we'll see what sort of time we do just keep it nice and neat and tidy coming out of this uh, corner you can hear the the rumblers going off on my pedals at the moment as uh, we head through the start finish line and now I'm going to heel and toe and see uh, how I get on so that was a 15-2 So you can see I can get back on the power because the car, although the car is sliding, it's a much more controlled slide. The back isn't trying to come round on me. So I'm at the limit of the amount of grip I can generate in those tyres as we break down into this second corner and all the way out. Ooh, I probably could have done with going down another gear there, but we'll see what sort of time we do. But hopefully what you can see from this kind of little demonstration is how much more stable the car is on the way into corners, which means that you get more grip. So there we go. We're not really sliding too much. and Just trying not to scrub speed as we uh, head into the final corner. So we'll see what sort of lap time we do. Obviously that last lap was a 15.2, which wasn't particularly spectacular, but we'll see uh, how we get on. So there we go, that was a 13.9 with heel and toe, so I actually gained about a second doing roughly the same sort of laps, just by keeping the car more stable, and it basically just gives you more grip on the way into corners. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a little shot of my feet and just uh, show you exactly what I'm doing. So there are five steps to heel and toe and I'm going to go through them very very quickly for you. So step one we're going to hit the brakes, step two we're going to engage the clutch, step three we're going to flip the throttle with the side of our foot so once again you can just see me moving my foot to the side to flip the throttle, step four we're going to engage the gear that we want and then step five take our foot off the clutch. So just going through that slightly faster, hit the brakes, engage the clutch, flip the throttle, change the gear, back out on the clutch.
So here we are heading out onto the start finish straight again. And you can see I'm in something very, very different this time around. I'm actually out in the 962 Porsche short tail, which is obviously the Porsche Group C entry and uh, about 600 horsepower. And basically what I wanted to show you guys is obviously that it works exactly the same. Oh, as I get it a little bit wrong there again. Again, I'm not perfect at this. 99 times out of 100, I get it right. Um, that it works exactly the same way with any car. Obviously, the 962 much less forgiving than uh, a GT86 road car, but working in exactly the same way and slowing down nicely for me as I uh, head into the last couple of corners. And that is the kind of the crux of Hill and Toe. Is it just keeps the car nice and steady, nice and predictable on the brakes. It also has the added benefit of uh, being a little bit gentler on the car. Um, obviously these old race cars built with such fine tolerances that they're incredibly easy to break. So uh, not so much a consideration in sim but definitely a consideration in real life as we run a little bit wide. There. Oh, hello, that's a bit of turbo kicking in. Yeah, these cars built with uh, such fine tolerances that it's very much a case of looking after the car. But obviously the racing benefits far outweigh the uh, the mechanical sympathy element in uh, sim racing. So it's definitely something you guys should have a look at. Something you think something you guys should have a try at at least and just uh, see if it helps your driving. And obviously the more realistic your uh, your driving is the uh, the faster you're going to go and the more age you can then take off um assetto corsa does have an auto blip function so you can get the uh the game to do this for you but obviously th at that point you're you're not driving in a way that you would do with a real car so i try and heel and toe as much as possible with these things unless the actual real car doesn't require me to do so then uh, then I heal and tow so hopefully that's been helpful a little bit of an explanation there in the middle of how to heal and tow and uh, of course don't forget if you have liked this video then do all the fun YouTube stuff and uh, have a look at the Amazon affiliate links in the description below as well there's one that uh, is through to the Amazon shop which means that I get a little bit of money back from Amazon just to help support the channel so thank you very much for watching and uh, I hope this video has been helpful